very Skyrath game. Now, obviously, he falls off later, but through the first 10, 15 minutes, it's a feeding frenzy. Three int heroes. The silence could be really strong. One of the better zoning supports versus a Tusk, especially, who just gets pummeled by the constant magic damage. Ten seconds and I guess remain. Newbie want to try to shore up these lanes here with this ban more than anything. Yeah, I, I, I quite like the ban, actually. Because Lion, as much as he's great as an answer to the storm, he's not the dominant laner that the Skyrath Mage can beat, so... Last ban now for C deck and probably targeting a support, but... Newbie actually one of the few teams who run the Tusk on the support role from time to time. He's had a much better win rate in the off lane, but... Really? They, they do ban the Dark Seer, yeah. so... It could even, I guess, theoretically could be an off lane Queen of Pain, but she's not going to fare very well here against a Phantom Lancer. Not without some strong help. Maybe Tusk Quap. Yeah, dual lane's a... That's kind of the trending thing, I guess. Dual, dual lane seem really popular, and... Even if teams, even if they end up backing off of them, they like to show those heroes in the lanes early. If you're putting the Quap off lane, it's to make space for some kind of a, a last pick that you feel is going to really, I, I guess, be able to deal with the PL. Something but... something to go mid, perhaps. Maybe safe lane if you want to put Storm there. I mean, newbie have flexibility. That is the nice thing about the Storm Quap as your cores is they can go to any lane aside from Storm to the off lane. If newbie want, they can, yeah, they could chat a fiend. But at that point, you're getting greedy. So. All right. They, you were right, gods. It's a support tusk. Tusk Slardar. This is a severe face rush lineup. If I've ever seen one, you can snowball in. You can bolt your way forward. Blink and crush and slither. All kinds of initiation for newbie. And Cedek, as much as they have their own chasing power, they've got almost zero disengage. Pretty much no defensive heroes. The game does have potential to get out of hand, and c -Deck in particular, Ten more so than Newbie, have very little way to recover if they start getting run over early. Five yeah, and uh, so much minus armor coming out of Slider and is, Dazzle, and that's... I mean, is this where you want, like, a Naga, even? Something just to be a sturdier frontline support? No, it's a Silencer. How is the I Silencer going to be played? don't know if that was... The pick. I mean, yeah, it's Silence is fantastic against Quop Storm. These are mobile heroes who rely on casting spells to get out, but... Tusk Slardar, just, man. That just that just looks like free food. Cedex team fight looks incredibly weak here. It's going to be a core silencer by the looks of things as maybe, Shiki picks it up. But maybe they even put a mid. I mean, how, generally he plays that mid role. We'll, we'll see if they want to just put I'm him just in the safe lane. I'm just trying to think of like how does Cedex actually take a fight? They charge in with a spirit breaker, but there's just like there's no follow up. There's no reliable ways to kill heroes. They silence and potentially then they, kill one. Then or they throw the lances, they chase yeah. for a while, they track, <laughs> exactly. you, you, have let to you chase. drag and slave, and then global wears off and you all die. <laughs> the way c draft works is they're going to be look, having prolonged fights. They they haven't got ways... I mean, you've got some damage coming out of Alina, but this is a support Lena to keep in mind. It's very much a, let's have a long prolonged fight where PL is wreaking havoc, having tons of illusions, throwing lances around Care Spirit Breaker, battle. getting multiple charges off, Bounty Hunter just poking around, throwing lots of tracks. You're not looking for quick fights, and that means the Global Silence is only going to be so useful here. All they right. do swap back, so it's not going to be a, a core silencer. That in particular would have been very strange, but we're not going to see it this time around, as you point out. And the teams get underway. Newbie off the bat. Five hero, level one smoke. Tusk leading the way. Sang Chang will be handling that. He's got dust ready. They are just looking for Garter to show his ugly mug in this bottom lane. He will go invis. He's going to be the one that breaks the smoke. And if he does and he's not in a great position, oh, that's likely to be your first blood. Garter runs in straight onto the dust. Pile in, boys. We've got a bounty hunter here, bottom. It's a feeding frenzy for newbie. They'll collect the first blood. And they also deny the warding of C deck, perhaps even more importantly. They, these camps will not be blocked. So they move can go back to later on. Great start for the TI4 champions. Yeah, that's just smart play. I, I, level one smokes, I think, in general, are a really bad idea, except when you're against a bounty hunter. Um, it just that's it works a, out that's so just the, That's just the decision-making of a veteran team. A lot of teams just let the bounty get up in their face, and newbie, they were ready for it. And that's Storm getting the last hit as well, which I think is the ideal scenario. Uh, Slaughter getting it for a fast boots is kind of nice for zoning the offlane, Storm but Storm... Bounty rune and a first blood. This is... Uh, he's already got his bottle out and 200 gold on top, so... That's just a thing of beauty if you're a newbie fan. Off to a nice start. So, taking a look at the wards here, there's a Radiant Observer Ward planted down bottom. 
in their safe lane. And uh, similarly, we do see another defensive lane ward here for C-Deck. So, but he getting the aggressive lane wards out. Let's see, what are the matchups going to be? Shiki on the Lina mid. Already going to take a bit of pressure from Sangcheng. He's spotted by Garter. So immediately starts giving him a bit of right-click harass. Has the Orb of Venom. Just looking to protect his Lina early on. Yeah, and Mu has a Sentry Ward, but Bounty Hunter has two Sentry Wards. So this is not going to be a Sentry battle that Newbie can really win in this mid lane. Well, Gods, let me tell Whoa. you. We're not sure how Q's Silencer will fit in later, but it's going to fit in just great now, <laughs> top lane. This will Snowball, not be fun. Uh, that's a long way to go. I'm not sure Sang Chain wants to stick around for this. He'll take a chop from the Lance. Backs off. And the last lane, we haven't really taken a look at it yet. It's Banana on the Dazzle. Going to be protecting Rabbit's Slardar as XZ plays the offlane Spirit Breaker. <laughs> Dual lane potentially. There is some kill power here, but it's going to take an overextension from Newbie to make Sa it happen. Rabbit's saying, I'm going to fight your 17% with my own bash. He doesn't go for points and sprint, says, I'm going to get the bash. Well, 10% versus and 17. He's already losing, yeah. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's been bashed twice in a row. And, and we all know it's 17% not to bash, so it's it's pretty much guaranteed yeah. the Spirit Breaker will come out on top. June proved that in their last game against Empire. He was, like, solo killing Yoku in lane with, like, a triple bash. It was it was ridiculous. It's a lot of fun to watch. Uh-oh, aggressive, taking some rest here. They fall out of Q, catching him out inside of the Ice Shards. Beautiful way to initiate this one. Although Sangshang takes some damage on the way out. Aggressive is going to turn it with a doppelganger, a one for one. Yes, he pokes him to death. Oh, uh, the Phantom Lance are going to work. June has no more mana, but does have stick charges. He's thinking about a go back in, but he doesn't have the scream just yet. And Mu is charged bottom. XC, that's my double damage earn. Get the hell away. Not terrible for C-Deck getting the PL, the early kill. They are looking to move Garter towards top. There's no Radiant Vision of this rotation. If they can get that Silencer out to the lane soon, they might have an opening, but he's I got to hoof it back. Does not have... Well, actually, does have a TP, but do not want to use it to get out here. Yeah, just a level one bounty hunter. No Janati yet. Also, the PL a bit mana stopped. He wants to make sure he has the Spirit Lance and the Doppelganger. He's just about to reach the mana he needs. They so. really want to bait this, but Garter got spotted. Yep. The freshly planted Radiant Observer, and immediately Garter's going to get the D Ward off. This is very nice for him. 50 gold, much needed, and level 2. Thank you very much. And now he does have the Janata. And Newbie going to have to play this top lane yeah. a bit more defensively. At least aware he's here, so it's going to be June in the front lines. If he needs to, he'll just blink backwards. and They're we'll... going on him. Oh, yeah. there you go. Blinks out. He... Straightforward blink out, and you just want to force that out. Gets him down even lower mana, so his ability to stay in this lane going to be challenged. But he's gone for a bottle first on June's Queen of Pain, so once that gets delivered, this top lane will be kind of uh, back to even for Newbie. Well, in the mid lane, we do see Shiki pulling ahead pretty substantially over Moo, and it's without actually getting much help from the Bounty Hunter. There's even a Sentry planted to support Moo and let him know he's safe. It, Lina, generally known for winning a lot of these 1v1 matchups, and Storm, apparently no exception for Sheik. He just has a bit better harass with the superior attack range, the longer range nuke, but as long as you don't die a Storm, you can always just go back to the jungle and catch up later yeah. on. See what happens around the four minute rune. That's going to be important for both these mid laners, for even the Queen of Pain in the off lane, and something that the teams are likely to both make a go at, especially towards that top rune. And uh, maybe, uh, I think, maybe tough for Newbie to actually get their hands on, although June is headed that direction. T Deck want the double rune spawn, and yeah. they're going to get it here for yeah, free. Shiki. Just... Illusion top, not really ideal. And bottom oh. lane, XC grabbing the bounty. Bottle Crow time, I guess, for uh, Newbie. Maybe not for the Storm. He's still full HP and mana. Even full HP isn't always enough against Alina. Just yeah. A, even like a single bounty hunter attack, if you get the Slave Laguna, almost enough to kill him from full HP. And you always have to be a little bit worried about those Spirit Breaker charges coming in as well before you hit level 6. So Moo kind of jungles one camp, tries to just accelerate himself to level 6 in the most safe and cautious way possible, but... And boy, is he safe and cautious or what? <laughs> He's going to walk all the way back, meets the Faceless uh, Rex. That's a misclick from Moo. The yeah, good that, old... The Band of Elven skin <laughs> <store>. <laughs> Guys, that's a first. Well, okay, Storm lost some weight, all right? So he's very fleet of foot, and he just Ooh. wants to show off by getting some extra agi. Storm new agi hero. <laughs> Charge bottom onto Banana. Slardar going to rotate in, and doesn't even have to really get that close. Just pokes his ugly head, and let me tell you guys, it is an ugly, ugly head. I, I don't know when this is going to get changed. We've got Source 2. We've got no new model in sight. I don't know what Valve is doing with, with our $60 million. You don't like the lantern? 
It reminds me of the the lantern Pokemon. <laughs> what is? It's called Lantern. Yeah, <laughs> Pokemon, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I think that's right. That guy, that guy was awesome. Well, it was there was an well. The, I think the upgrade one was like Ampharos or something. They always have some like really crappy puns in Pokemon, like just the, the most abominable puns you could think of. Maybe I. Just but I love them. Bl anyway. Blame the translation. You know, it didn't translate well from Japanese. Maybe. Are getting their levels on the silencer here. Something that you always want to keep an eye on when, when you see that four or five position silencers. When's he going to get level six? That's question number one. Answer is pretty quickly. But then the bigger question is, and what I'm curious to find out, what do they do with the ultimate? Is it going to set up a charge? Do they maybe go for a smoke gank on the back of it? What's the play here? Well, for now, both teams staying pretty attack. quiet. June is headed back to the top lane with Sancheng, and Storm has... Level 6 himself, but I don't see him looking to rotate a lot. He's going to have a TP score, probably look to counter gank, but for the most part, he only TPs to a lane if it's a guaranteed kill. Uh, that goes without saying, but he'd much rather be farming if there's not kills to be had. Garter again getting eyes on a hero, but it's Banana immediately walking onto mid. Just can't seem to find anybody on their own, and a plant down a lane ward looking to protect a storm, even a fresh sentry in the mid lane. Making sure they're not stacking camps and... This is this is reminding me a bit of uh, the bounty hunter we saw out of FY when he was shut down a lot versus EG, where he couldn't find any kills, but he did do a good job of getting the aggressive wards out. Uh, also, something that you see out of Shawade. So clearly, these players have been watching each other's replays, and they they know the fine art of being off the map. Yeah, it used to be that it felt like bounties had to get kills and get like assists or a lot of pressure done to be useful but nowadays it's kind of changed where just getting scouting information being a mobile ward is much more the kind of play style you have to do as a bounty hunter because getting too aggressive teams are just too good at dealing with bounty with sentries rotations and you end up just dying too much playing that playing that way so much more defensive nature and that's what we're seeing more and more of Gigi has the ultimate if he oh moon knew it too He's got the hill ward, and this is going to be called out. He should have an idea that there is some vision down the hill. Was not spotted, as it is currently nighttime. Piel got pressured really heavily topping. Actually got forced to TP home uh -oh. from the Queen of Pain. He's and the, gone bottle as well. And you've got a, a PL bottle on the loose, too. Yep. Just a lot of harass early, and this is the strength of the newbie cores. Queen of Pain in the off lane, one of the better harassing heroes. And because of that tusk, they just can't seem to kill her early on. Things looking nice for Newbie here in the laning stage. They've got about a 1250 gold lead experience. Quite a bit closer, only 500. They're starting to pull ahead in the farm department. So the Storm, not as much as Storm can gank, he doesn't really want you. He'd prefer to be farming. But this slider, as soon as he hits Blink Dagger, he is going to be going all over the map looking to set up kills. He may look to head towards the Storm's lane, or maybe Storm comes to his, his lane, but the Storm slider duo is can kill pretty much anyone on the and, map. And, and the problem is, as we talked about in the draft, there's no defensive play here, really. Yeah. Maybe a global, but you only get that once every two and a half minutes. That's not. That's just not going to cut it. Yeah, and the, the beauty of this is that Rabbit can head towards any of the lanes. He can team up with a Queen of Pain who'll have a Scream and Sonic Wave. Guaranteed kill on a PL, probably. You go mid, it's a guaranteed kill on a Lina with the Storm. So any of the three lanes, you can find kills if you uh, Guaranteed kill, maybe top, but the Silence is going to come out onto June. He's healed up by the Stick Charges. Oh, suddenly, full HP. Shiki's got a Laguna. Will he get in range? Chase, my friend. He slaves him. Can't get the job done. The charge is coming, albeit slowly, and already June on the TP out. They might get Sang Cheng here. Uh, it has the dust, but that's not really going to help him against the dog pile of three heroes. One for one. XC, however, let's get scouted out here by Moo in the mid lane. Well, C deck happy with that overall. Looks like the gold goes their way. But this is before the Slardar of Rabbit oh. comes online, and, and he's got his blink. Guys. It's a great timing. He's going to probably instantly TP mid. Yeah, he's going mid. Oh, and despite all the aggressive wards, they don't have anything behind oh. the tower. You'd really love to have a ward. Oh, Nether Strike on Moo, but they there. don't get the LSA. Oh, Laguna, do oh, I get it off? He's got the range, zaps him down right as the jump comes in. There's the crush. Oh, the quad bolt hits on two. Newbie, quick. And decisive retaliation. Yeah. But a storm for Alina, still overall a relatively even trade, and newbie do reveal the blink dagger. But I mean my question is, does it matter if it's revealed? Because I just don't see how C Deck deal with this right now, gods. Yeah, I don't think it matters too much that it's being revealed. At the same time, C Deck could be so happy with that trade just because they weren't meant to get a kill there. That was meant to be just a clean pick off for newbie on a core hero with a slider rotation, but so I'm getting caught out. That's something going C Deck's way. They're initi I mean, their initiation is just the spirit breaker, but they make it work.
with the charge after and for Cedic they've just got to buy time for PL to come online it's going to take take quite a bit they've got to play defensively that's why they're using the bounty hunter just to get all these wards up but I think these wards are almost going to become too deep you need wards closer to the lane closer to the tier one towers to spot these slider rotations I like seeing this from uh, from Rabbit. He's the one buying the smokes here. Frees up the supports to get their basic items. He's already got what he needs, which is the blink, and he's just going to keep on moving around the map. They'll give the bottom lane to Bananas Dazzle. Slight risk of getting ganked here if he shows his face on his own, but it's worth the risk just to keep the Slardar off the map, and even if he's not ganking, you don't know where he is. you got to sit back, and oh, yeah. as a result, Everyone's newbie <laughs> going to start really pulling ahead in the CS department. You can see now they're... I mean, what is that? 10, probably about 30 CS up on the cores alone. Only yep. 11 minutes in. You don't see Rabbit, and you know he could be smoked just waiting for the PL to go for a last hit. He Dyer's could be smoked at the mid lane waiting attack. for the Lena to go for a last hit. Nowhere is safe on the map at this point when Slider is missing. And there's the smoke. And he is missing. And they're scared. C-Deck are going to smoke as well, but I feel like Newbie might be able to get a double. There is a Global, though. Who's going to get the jump here? He balls in. Global. Will he get it off in the nick of time? Shiki completely chased on. Now they Global. Another strike on a rabbit. He's the tanky one. Not the ideal target. They track him as well. Snowball crashing in. Going to hit on Q. Walrus punch. We'll finish him off. Moo trying to ball out. He has bottle charges. XE also trapped, surrounded, and brought down. As June joins the fray, they do lose Moo. That's a track kill. They get another track out. June starting to take a beating from the Phantom Lancer. Sang Chain has a snowball soon though. Do they continue the chase? There's a secondary Lance, but aggressive now out of mana. Newbie just a bit stronger here. If that global goes off first, that's a different fight, but that's the power of the Slardar Storm Initiation. Yeah. Zip zap. Like that, that, you're dead. That was the right play from Cedex. Slider's uh, missing off the map. He's definitely ganking us. Let's group up as three or four, go for a smoke and see what we can find on the map because Cedic have to make sure they're the ones getting the jump, and they were very close to being in that position. Unfortunately, the Blink Crash catching three heroes. If Silencer was maybe just positioned a little bit further behind, could have been a different story, but it was the right move from Cedic, and it does show this team knows how to deal with the aggression of, aggression of Slider. It just didn't come up the right way right there. Thanks, thanks to the track gold, they actually won that fight as far as the <laughs> numbers go, but yeah, uh, it's, it's like you said, a lot of it's on aggressive. Uh, the difference is he's not the gyro this time around. It's He has to be patient here. He's got to keep his farm up. Phantom Lancer just not the same type of hero. But so far, he's doing his job, maintaining the lead in terms of net worth. He showed up for kills, too. That's Yeah, he's, yeah, he's found handy. the balance here. Garter getting scouted out. Oh, mid lane. There's the jump in. They found Shiki, and again he goes down. They have to know there's a hill ward at this point. That's twice now Nubia have just come rushing in. That ward has really paid for itself. Two big kills on the Lina. Delaying the Yules, and the Yules is such a great answer to Slardar. You see him jump in, you can just precast the Yules if you've got Vision. You can Yules yourself, you can remove the amp damage, but he doesn't get to do any of that without the Vision. And now another incredibly deep ward planted by Garter at the top hill. This is, again, not the most handy ward to have. There's still T1 towers up, but I think he just feels like if he puts wards near the T1 towers, giving kind of more useful Vision, it's going to get instantly dewarded because the Radiant side, Newbie, they're piling up sentries. They know there's a Bounty Hunter in the game, and they also know those are the crucial vision points that they've got to control. They're not worried about this spot being warded up at that top cliff. So if anything, and they look back on this replay like, oh, that's where he warded. They're not going to think, oh, crap, I wish we de that. They're going to be like, well, he got forced to ward in a pretty useless spot. So we are going to see the Bloodstone build out of Moo this game. Not a whole lot of control for the Storm. The Global and there's the Charge. Maybe the Yule Stun combo, but you got to get on top of him first. So He's thinking he just wants to probably tank up so he can survive the Global Silence as much as possible. Uh, that's that's a good point. We have seen the Yules build on occasion to deal with, like, say, a Skywrath Mage. Could have been a possibility here for Mu, but I'm going to go with a more stock and standard build nowadays. Another smoke from Cedic. They bring the PL also this time around. Are rotating the whole gang in. We may see a five-man rumble. C-Deck, boy, they love their smokes around this stage of the game, but they don't really want the big team fight. They want the easy pickoff. Global comes out. Moo, nowhere to run. Charge, Nether Strike. Commit everything you've got to bring him down, C-Deck. They will. Nice take down there in the mid lane. That's a Storm dead. Track gold piling in for, I believe it was four heroes. That's an 800 gold swing. That's worth the global silence. That's kind of what it's here for in the early game. You use that ultimate to... And now Newbie want to punish. Oh, yeah. They blink on mid. There's no tier one. Q will be the victim of this. A one for one around the map. And while this global's down, Newbie, you got to expect they want to keep the heat up. Yeah. A pretty 
unimportant kill in the silencer, though. That is the kind of a five position hero on the dire side, so not a hero that really needs items this game, at least not until you really start getting towards the late game, or you're thinking, okay, at this point, yeah, maybe we want a four star for a glimmer cape or the makings of a refresher, but at this stage, C deck are perfectly happy with silencer not having anything in the way of item progression. They may have to sack this tower top. See deck we're painting it out. They knew global's down and we just can't take 5v5 fights without it. So let's go split push, take over the enemy woods, play keep away. Now you see me, now you don't. Aggressive has a, a Lena about to back him up here. So if Stormtrams tries to farm and contest this lane. Still no Yules though for Shiki. Yeah. He's really been neutered this game. Two, three, and one. Such an important item. Stacking the Radiant jungle for himself here to uh, boost up that farm. And I, daytime, getting this kill bottom lane, probably not possible. They don't have global silence. I think they're just going to look for some farm here as far away from newbie as possible. And the counter gank potential for newbie. Oh, boy. You better watch out. But they found they a double started, damage yeah. drone, and they're going to they're gonna chance it. There's they're no going radiant for the vision. There's no Radiant Vision, but the tier one's already down. And normally a Radiant squad at this point does one of two things. They either press for the tier two immediately and get aggressive wards up, or they back off and head straight down towards the middle of the map. Rosh is dropping rather quickly though, gods, and there is no rotation. The circle is drawn, but c this, yeah. are gonna sneak a Rosh for free, even if Newbie shows up in time to try and contest this, maybe get some cleanup kills. You don't see many Chinese teams pull this off. It's generally more your Cloud Nines who take that type of risk and, well, c -deck. That's a big boost of momentum for yeah. them. I think Vasiga was just like, there wasn't even really a risk there. They saw everyone at the top tier one tower and they're like, well, they could potentially all TP to the tier one, but they found a DD rune. They were in the position right by Roche. Like they were just farming the Radiant Jungle. That was the safest place for them to be to be farming. And you find a DD rune, you see four hoes of the tier one, it's just like, oh, we can suddenly Roche at and there's no, nothing they can do about it. So very, very big pickup for C-Tech and they're going to be thrilled about that. The Bounty Hunter tax is in full effect. I just want to look at Banana's net worth here. 1170, the next closest, a 2160 net worth silencer. And to me, this is purely two things. Track gold and having to buy a metric ton of sentries. Yep. You can just see these little green dots peppering the map. It's, it's all up to him to keep the vision up. Maybe later on they can get the gem, but for now it's... Even when you don't get the kills, you still slow down their economy just by existing as a Bounty Hunter. That's problematic, to say the least here. You definitely want some item progression on your Dazzle, Medallions, Glimmer Capes, a lot of useful utility items you can get this game. But I think he'd settle for a Bracer right about now. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a Magic Wand. I was about to say, an upgraded bold. Magic Stick would be, uh, <laughs> be crazy. A big pickup. Jiki has got the, the Yule Scepter now and already starting to farm a little beyond that. And C-Deck can... Fight pretty well now. They've got an Aegis. They've got that little bit of protection here. So I imagine they will be looking to get aggressive and try to find some more pickoffs, especially while Global's up. That's guaranteed kills if they can get that good charge initiation. Every time it's up, they want to make their yep. move. Still no BKBs on the Radiant side. They are building towards one on Rabbit. Available yet, there is a Radiant Observer. I think it's almost more suspicious that they don't see a single hero here bottom than if they actually saw three or four. They're playing back a bit. But Q looks for the opening. There's the charge, the track coming out. Do they global at the right moment? Yes, they do. Moo can't back out. They can't grave him to save him. Laguna, they throw everything at him. And he dies in a hellfire of damage. Now the hunt under Banana. Aggressive getting caught here. He's already doppelganger. They might be able to focus him. He dodges the quad Aggressive with the plays. And now under Rabbit. They're getting the track hold here. This is turning into a train wreck for Newbie as C deck dogpile in. It's a double for aggressive it's four heroes dead and once again these young upstarts continue to deliver on the big stage a 4300 gold swing that is sweet that was just huge here and that really highlights the power of the pl and the boots to travel build because he wasn't even there at the fight he took the t1 top tower as well not only is it a fall for nothing they get the top tower they're going to pressure this bottom tier two tower they got so much out of that and newbie have really got to respect the power of this charge plus global that is just catching the storm trick time and time again i 
I feel like they've just got to play way more defensively and have the vision of the charge coming in. Otherwise, they're just done for every time if the storm gets picked off. It makes me a little sad we're not on the mainstream, just because I would love to hear some stats from Knoxville about smoke ganks. I really feel like CDEC is one of the top three to six teams in the tournament when it comes to smoke gank success. and. So many teams mess up the global. So often you see a silencer get caught, just pump it defensively to run away. They global too early and newbie just backs. They global too late and storm balls away or gets scraped. That was just perfect. The right time, the right place. And now newbie, all of a sudden, they the pump the They're, gank train comes towards bottom. They don't smoke it towards anything right now. They they want to fight in this bottom lane. They want to fight while the global's down. Maybe they just take the tower. <laughs> oh, they forgot about the tower. CDEC got a little excited. They left it on 19 health, and Rabbit will take it. So, uh, small boost of gold for newbie. They'll definitely be happy, and I think it pays for the smoke. But by golly gods, look at that graph. That looks like a that looks like a water slide, or maybe a more of a roller coaster. <laughs> They're just dropping off a cliff. This CDEC team. They are such a blast to cast. Yeah, they just play really... And it, it's aggression, but it's always controlled aggression. They're not just going wild and uncontrollably in, hoping for the best as they dive towers. It's always very much they have a numbers advantage or they have a, a strategic approach towards the fight with the charge global silence, the boots of travel pick up from aggressive. He knows he can be there and just get involved and take part in the action. This is the kind of carry play which... The successful teams are doing it, TI. You're having active carries who are coming to the fights as often as possible. And to me, he's got to be on that short discussion of the the big, young, up-and-coming players at the event. You've got aggressive. Uh, of course, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention maybe who's been turning heads all over the place. And probably Sonico, the other really big one who has never played at TI before, who's been so impressive on the highest levels. But... T-Deck still have to be careful. They are a bit weak in the team fight department if the global's not just right. Yep. And new BR clustering up. They do not have any BKBs yet, but they are closing in on them. So Mu has a bloodstone now. He only had the point boost uh, of the last fight. It's all Garner. They're going to dust for this. They commit a lot just to kill off that bounty hunter. He doesn't die yet. The mech keeps him in fighting shape. They turn immediately with the Laguna. The global did come out in the midst of it, and it forces a headlong retreat as Banana is purged and charged by the doppelganger PL. Storm trying to get on these backlight here, but Garner's kept alive for now. Banana should die to this swarm of PL illusions. And next on the list may well be the Storm of Move. Rabbit out of mana. Surrounded. It's just a <laughs> endless charge forward. PL illusion upon PL illusion as aggressive screams his war cry. C deck again. You just can't commit that much on a bounty hunter. And, and Queen of Pain fall back as well. This is just financial loss after financial loss for newbie. They can't. Uh, they're getting nothing in return. This is why they picked off a Lena, but Lena kind of. Through the ulti, used everything, and would be pretty happy with the outcome of that fight there, especially with the Queen of Pain buyback. So, for, for Cedic, they are just dominating this game right now. They're completely outplaying Newbie. It, Bounty Hunter is just not the hero you want to go on, it feels. Especially, well, I guess he's the mech carrier, but they didn't have, like, the the positioning to just blow him up before he could get anything off, and, and Global was up is the other issue. All of a sudden, look at the gold discrepancy here. Aggressive, 2,700 gold. He's completed his boots of travel. He just Match. picked up a defusal two minutes ago, less than that, it feels like. And he's like. got his next item. Yeah, this is this is scary stuff. He's running a mint. He's 6-0-4. He's the leader in CS. He's basically the best at everything right now when it comes to this game of Dota 2. For newbie, they've got to just... Play passively until they have their anti-global silence items. Uh, Storm Spirit, BKB, Slider, BKB. Queen of Pain already has the Yule Scepter, but is going BKB on top of that, which I totally agree with, I feel. Unless it, it's an Ags, but... It makes you wonder, should Mu have gone, and of course hindsight 2020 here, but should he have gone for what Sumail does in this situation? Sumail, if he's up against a really strong silence, he always rushes the Yules. We've seen it like three or four times, and I've seen quite a few games where it makes the difference. It, could that have been an item that changes the game mm. for Newbie? It's definitely a possibility where to go great way to get out of that global silence. I think the one thing he was counting on was the fact that Queen of Pain was rush was rushing the Yules and 
He's hoping that the, the Gules will prevent the Spirit Breaker charge. Oh, Garter pulled and trapped, and meanwhile, bottom lane, Cheeky comes in as well, oh, looking for nice the stun time. setup, but there's the global. They go onto Rabbit, committing heavily onto the initiator of Newbie. They bring him down. The fish has been turned into sushi, and Banana will die in about a half second. Track after track Just after doesn't track. even have a chance. This is... This is getting out of hand, gods. Yeah. And it's, it's, I mean, it's not like newbie can be confident about the late game. You're up against one of the best late game spells in global and a PL with track gold. Not to mention the Lina, who's casually about to complete an Aghanim Scepter. In fact, uh, it's on the Courier coming out right now. Level two ultimate already, soon to be level three. Yeah, Shiki had a kind of a Dyer's rough follow up to the laning stage where he got picked off a couple times by the Slider Blink Dagger, but. Not, has not phased him at all. He is still out farming all three of the newbie core heroes. So, thanks for Lena looking very good as we head towards the late game. And I mean, all of C deck XZ is going to be having a Shadow Blade soon after the Midas pick up. His farm is not going to fall off because of this. And normally, see Bounty Hunters kind of around the like seventh or eighth slot on net worth, but so many track kills has just skyrocketed Garda's net worth. It was a Midas pickup for XC, so the cold strat is in full effect here for C deck, and now he's building into a Shadow Blade. You might think, oh, that's not very good against Slardar, but it's great when you're the one running in, and he's got the global to secure the charge. Yeah, I think it's it's a really nice pickup. It means he won't just get thrown up in the air in Yules if they don't have detection for him. I mean, BKB is another way of doing that, but you'd rather they don't see you coming. Absolutely. At the very least, then they probably get off the grave to, to help cover the retreat. Every time this global is up, look for C deck to continue making moves yeah. around the map. They are down on smokes, though. One smoke, Roshan, maybe. one smoke, and then they're done for eight minutes. So they may have to slow the game down a little bit around that time. Yeah, I think try and push out the lanes a bit. Take, the, take this Roshan that's now back and available. Newbie will be very hesitant to contest Roshan with Global Silence available, and BKB up, up on Slider at least, but Storm Spirit still a, a ways away from his. Well, let's see how the item progression is over on C deck. We've talked about some of the items here. The four staff is going to be coming out for Q. Very nice to have against a Storm, against a Tusk Snowball, even a Slardar. And over for Newbie, you mentioned the BKB. Moo working on his own. He has a little bit of a ways to go. June. Also going into what looks to be a BKB, but like clockwork, every time the global is up, C deck do something with the smoke. This time, they think about Roche, but then they think better of it. And find some more kills, and they're swinging on towards mid. Banana, the man in front. He might turn into a smoothie rather quickly if C deck get their hands on him. They do one sweep through the enemy jungle, say, okay, nothing's here, let's let's go back for Roche. And I kinda like this move. You your ideal scenario is to find a core hero with that smoke and then you can fall back and take Roshan, but you don't want to make, waste too much time running around. The one hero whose net worth I, I neglected to mention, Mr. Oh, Banana. He's, he's, he's going, going backwards. the wrong way. Yeah. He's uh, How low can he go? At some point, does he have to sell his boots for wards? He's down to 880 net worth. Brutal stuff. This is a support nightmare. And you're up against so much burst. That, like, Lina can... Can one shot him with the ultimate uh, minus seven damage. So if he takes seven damage in a Laguna, he's dead. Well, just almost a level 16 lane too. Jump onto aggressive here. They get the snowball, the full combo. They get off the global though. The three, four hero charge through. XC was ready. The cavalry have arrived. And Z Decker turning this one right back on its head. Shiki laying in and trying to force heroes back. They prevent the TP out from the storm as he gets Cyclone. Bloodstone denies on the retreat. On the other side of the engagement, the apparently invincible cow continues his chase. Aggressive will not be able to catch out June. And finally, TPing home is Sang Chang. That hey. charge, man, XC, but the global covering his in initiation, there's just no way to stop it. I guess the good news is C deck only got one real kill, but a storm deny means he's chewing through these bloodstone charges. More downtime for him. Global goes on cool. I just feel like newbie have to go for a big smoke and get something done. While Glo they haven't use the time when global's been on cooldown to achieve enough no. the one big time when global's on cooldown they pushed their top tier on tower but they traded that for roshan c deck has not been punished for the global cooldowns whatsoever this game it's not the newbie hasn't tried we have seen them smoke and just go for ganks four or five times this game but c deck haven't gotten caught they've always been sitting back they have good wards and they're playing keep away when the global's on cooldown and as soon as it's up 
that switch flips, and in they go again for round two. They're not making it easy here for the TI4 champs who have been very hit or miss in a lot of their series. One game they dominate, the next game they struggle. C deck. Looking to take this game one now, up to about a 14,000 gold lead, 1,000 experience. Firmly in command with an excellent late game and track gold at their side. Newbie still being scrappy, trying to get their next round of items and just hang on. Pray for the big team fight. Pray that this global can be denied at some point by BKBs, by the Yule Scepter. It is theoretically possible. It's just the execution that's been lacking for Nubi. Yeah. And to me, the other big worry for Nubi is their damage output is going to fall off towards the late game. They've got a lot of this minus armor, and I think it would be okay if they were in a more even game where minus armor can actually somewhat amplify Storm into a pseudo right-clicking carry when he goes balling in and zipping around, right-clicking with the uh, overload procs. But when you're playing from behind, a Storm, Queen of Pain, as your kind of magic damage, burst damage heroes, is going to really just not scale that well into the late game. It, it doesn't work if you're not playing ahead. Like, heroes like Lina, Storm, Quop can be great late game carries only when you're ahead. And it's also the amp damage you'd really want it against the PL especially, but he's always getting it off of himself, whether it's a doppelganger, a Manta, a Fusal Blade. Yeah, so you don't have the minus armor on arguably the most important hero to be able to focus down. It's so yeah, so unreliable on him, and they're just forced to give up tier two towers at this point. They can't really defend them. Lena's also the one hero I guess you can reliably get amp damage on, but she's saying, well, let's try and counter that. Picks up a plate mail, building probably towards the Shivers Guard, although AC not out of the realm of possibilities, but probably unlikely. Actually, Lotus Orb is great because you can use that to actually dispel the amp damage. So maybe Lotus Orb. It's going to be a consideration for Sheik. It really could be. And, well, uh, we'll have to see what the choice is. Maybe even the snowball can be counted with this one. We saw that earlier today. And the Queen of Pain all tossed out immediately. Now, that is an X for the Queen of Pain, but immediately gets thrown up in the air by the Yule. The stun comes out. Track gold. Don't even need the Laguna. Sang Shang could be next. Here comes Spirit Breaker rushing forward. That's the Laguna. The Nether Strike back. They want some extra track gold and aggressive. He figures Sang Shang's dead. He goes for Rabbit instead. Purging Banana. And they commit on him. They get him too. It's a triple for Shiki, who continues. Continues to get the job done for c -Deck. Finally, Rabbit runs in, but it's on to four heroes. He's got a little help from Moo, and now the Global, and now Newbie are routed and completely without support. Trapped in their base, Sang Shane searches for answers. He wants the Rampage, but no one's going to give it to him, LD. It's four. Can he get the fence, Cheeky? He's close. He doesn't get it aggressive, you jerk. <laughs> Taking all the glory for himself. <laughs> and then Cedek all the way. 33 minutes in. 23 to 10. This has to be one of the biggest surprise stories of the international out of any of them that I've ever cast. This team just continues to deliver. And the best part is they did it with some new heroes this time around. Yeah, they, they're doing it in style. They're doing it with... A very similar approach to, they're very reminiscent to me of like LGD. They have great in the mid game with how they move around the